राजीव कुमार थैंक यू सो मच सौरभ थैंक यू डॉक्टर राजीव चावला एंड डॉक्टर शालनी जगी फॉरिंग मी हियर आई एम जस्ट गोड टेक इट फॉरवर्ड फ्रॉम वेर अशू एज लेपटॉप एंड वी आर गोन टू लुक एट न्यू Uh, I wouldn't call it new because it's been there for the last six years, um, and whether this actually solves the problem that we have been facing in India. So the growing wall of real-world evidence, especially from India, for the the co-formulation, which is IDECAS, um, uh, I've been contracted by Novo Nordisk for this talk. Uh, this is my agenda. So we all know the importance of HbA1c. I don't need to stress it on this learned audience, uh, but but. what is important to know that that hba1c reduction um, is infinite as far as in, insulin goes and uh, insulin used in the right dosages can get most of our patients under control we are eating a very high carbohydrate meal which is very evident from the starch study which came in almost a decade back and the pure study of dr mohan which came in recently um uh sorry so high uh, ppg and fasting plasma uh, glucose contributes to higher hba1c if you look at these indian data it clearly suggests that uh, that high fasting and pp contributes to be the driver for higher hba1c and uh, we need to uh, initiate insulin very very early and probably uh, we accumulate an hba1c about 8% for a long period of time before we can initiate insulin as you can see in these uh, real world studies from india uh, importantly also um, data from monier as well as wang has suggested that the relative contribution of fasting and pp to hba1c especially in asian indians at all hba1cs whether it's closer to goal or higher the the ppg cont continues to be 50% or more as compared to caucasian and that is very evident in this particular study published around 4 years back the glycemic responses in asian and non asian people when they initiate a basal insulin is different almost 50% of non asians come under control with a fasting blood sugar reduction that uh, uh, basal insulin can, can cause but only 39% come uh, as far as asian goes thus suggesting that the postprandial does contribute a much higher uh, uh, contribution to hba1c now the key realities are that we are uh, we need an insulin which is made for india uh, which has flexibility we all want flexibility has direct control on ppg and is suitable for a high carbohydrate eating population and basal insulins cannot address these challenges so we need an insulin which is actually made for india that is why the idecas co formulation i call it and that it's an innovation that actually suits indian reality and also this so the so the insulin degludeg as well as insulin aspart remains separate uh, uh, whether it is in the subcutaneous tissue or in the solution or in the formulation in the, in, in the pen and as dr ashu rastogi spoke about that this multi hexamer formation seems to be the most important protraction mechanism and once it's injected the zinc and phenol diffuses out and the biologically active monomers of insulin aspart and insulin degludeg slowly come into the circulation and that is the whole protraction mechanism which uh, prevents the glycemic variability with this particular um, insulin uh, co formulation so uh, as i as, as the video suggests that it has a very distinct prandial as well as a, a basal element which is very separate on chromatographic studies and there's a sharp separation of these peaks 
thus making sure that they do not overlap with each other. And the shoulder effect that we see with premix insulin analog is not seen with this particular preparation as such. Um, if you see uh, data which we are going on to the, 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 the studies which are the phase 3 and 3b studies which are the boost group of studies for the co-formulation uh, Dr. Ashu showed us about the PKPD data from Tim Heise where there was a lesser intraday and interday variability and a four times lesser uh, intraday variability with insulin deglutag as compared to U100 large gene. And uh, what we see in the in the laboratories in the PKPD, if we see in, in phase three studies as well as in, in real world studies, then it actually uh, improves the confidence of all prescribers. And this particular Asian study on um, uh, naive patients from, from Asia, especially from Japan, um, were put on IDEC ASP and insulin glargine for reduction of HbA1c. One would say that this is uh, comparing apples to oranges, but let's see. Uh, when you compare two active comparators uh, and mo both uh, cohorts or the both arms are titrated to similar fasting plasma glucose, then surrogate endpoints become important because HbA1c continues to remain the same. Uh, so surrogate endpoints of dose of insulin, hypoglycemia, uh, nocturnal as well as severe, all these become important. Uh, important to see that in this particular study, there was a 1.4% reduction, but there was a 0.3% better reduction with IDEC as as compared to insulin glargine U100. Now, one would say that this, this you can have because you have a shorter acting element in IDEC as. But if you see, majority of IDEC as was, was at dinner time and you had a better post-dinner control and a lesser nocturnal hypoglycemia and confirmed uh, hypoglycemia with IDEC as, as compared to basal insulin. So uh, in spite of having a shorter acting insulin, which, which increases the chances of hypoglycemia, in this treat to target study treating IDEC as versus U100 insulin glargine in insulin naive patients in Asian, we saw that you had a better superior HbA1c uh, difference. You had a, a, a much lower risk of hypoglycemia, both nocturnal and severe. And you had more patients reaching almost 72% reaching their target of HbA1c less than 7%. So what we saw in, in uh, the PKPD and the laboratories, we are able to see also in the phase 3A3B studies. Again, if you look at Time in range from this particular study, we, we see that there's a better time in range with IDEC as, as compared to Glargy. That's the reason that many associations across the globe and the RSSDA also recommends IDEC as co formulation as a choice for insulin initiation. It also tells us that there has to be a narrative when we speak to patients, avoid insulin as a threat, alleviate patients' anxiety. Insulin therapy should be considered in all patients failing to achieve glycemic control on three orals. Again, let us look at a, a real-world evidence. We saw from Dr. Ashu, we, he spoke about the PKPD, then he spoke about the BRIGHT study, um, uh, the, then he also spoke about the in-target study, and here we spoke about Onishi's data, and we look at a real-world evidence coming from India. Uh, th this is a one-year um, non-interventional study, multicentric prospective non-interventional study of the insulin co-formulation in patients with type 2 diabetes and was published almost a year back with Dr. Jyoti Dev as the principal author. As you can see, more than 1,000 patients, uh, multicentric progressive single arm, that could be a, 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 a sort of um, criticism that you did not have another arm to compare. Observational PMS, um, uh, uh, men and women with diabetes aged more than 18 years, um, you had to collect data and safety as well as efficacy data at 3, 6, 12 months and also assess for HbA1c fasting PP at 3, 6 and 12 months. Um, 40 sites, 52 weeks duration, a very good completion rate. 55 was the mean age. Duration of diabetes was 10 years. HbA1c in poor control. So as we have seen in majority of Indian studies that are average HbA1c hovers around 9%. So this we can extrapolate to many of our patients, garden variety who come to our clinic. 
Also, 25% of the patients were already on some other insulin. 75% were on OADs. Um, a slightly gender dominance of males in this particular study. Uh, reasons for starting the co-formulation, majority was to improve HbA1c, some were to improve fasting and PP, some to reduce the risk of hypoglycemia and also for improving the flexibility of dosing. If you look at the change in prescription based on proportion of patients taking OAD, you can see there's a reduction in SU and metformin and alpha glucosidase, red, red reduction in, in TZDs and an improvement um, in SGLT2 use and similar GLP1 RA use. So secretagogues have slightly gone down, sensitizers have gone down, G uh, SGLT2s have gone up. If you look at the change in HbA1c from baseline, uh, whether it's insulin treated or OAD treated, you have a fantastic 1.8% reduction of the 27% patients who were treated with insulin and 1.7% of patients who were treated with an OAD at a baseline of 9.3, just getting majority of our patients very closer to goal. If you look at fasting plasma glucose and PP, a very decent reduction in both fasting plasma and, and PP glucose with the IDEC as co formulation. Um, this is interesting because uh, we saw this in, in, in PKPD studies. We have seen this in other uh, phase 3A, 3B uh, data. But again, from Indian settings, the confirmation of a reduction in hypoglycemia with the co-formulation, which we would expect based on the PKPD study, is very reassuring. So if you look at the events of confirmed hypoglycemia four weeks before starting IDEC app, there is a significant reduction in confirmed hypoglycemia. If you look at severe hypoglycemia, both in patients with OAD and insulin, again, there is a significant and nil severe hypoglycemia once we have introduced uh, IDEC app on these patients, thus strengthening our confidence on using this co formulation. So, the SMART study summary was an effective HbA1c fasting PP and an improved safety in terms of low risk of hypoglycemia. What we saw in the boost, boost 3A3B studies, we again confirmed it with a real-world evidence like the SMART study. Uh, again, uh, IDEC as is a very simple and convenient. Um, there's a lot of mealtime and meal-related dosing because that they had done in the phase 3A study with the, the begin group of studies for Degludeg where you can have an 8 to 40-hour dosing difference between uh, the two insulin. Again, with the IDEC as you could have a four hour, minimum four hours because the as part should not, should not uh, come together. Again, you have total control because the power of two insulins in one, which both work separately and do not mix with each other, makes it a very simple and convenient use. Um, these uh, titration algorithm can change based on patient to patient. So I'm not going into deep for this. Again, very... Um, uh, insulin friendly devices which is important so if you have a superior insulin it cannot be in a mediocre device both the flex touch and the novopen 4 are very very superior devices itself so it can be used with patients with any kind of deformity and thus making it uh, accessible to majority of the population in india in summary it's a it's an insulin which is made for india suitable with a very for a high carb diet shows us gives us a total control of not just fasting BP, but HbA1c. Again, it can be used in patients who are on other insulins and are not doing well. Offers a lot of simplicity and convenience and most importantly, safety when you have a very, very good efficacy. Thank you all for a patient here.